920, welcome back. The Artemis One mission has been making headlines all morning, and although today's launch was officially postponed, we could think of no one better to chat about this program than retired NASA astronaut Colonel Eileen Collins. And Colonel Collins was the first woman to pilot the space shuttle and the first to command a space shuttle mission. She lives here in San Antonio, and we last saw her at Fiesta, where she was the Grand Marshal for the Battle of Flowers Parade. Now she's back. Good morning. Good to have you here, Eileen. Thanks. Oh, it's great to be here. Well, I we, love talking about rockets. Well, we have so much to talk about. Mike, of course, being a huge space aficionado, we had to keep him on board here yeah. for this interview. <laughs> Let's jump right in. What are you hearing about what today uh, caused today's launch to get postponed? Something about an engine bleed or something? Right, right. So they made it down to about 40 minutes before launch. And these engines need to be thermally conditioned. So they like, like run hydrogen through them. And they need to be at a certain temperature when they light. For some reason, they couldn't get into the third engine I don't know all the details yet and prior to that there were a couple of hydrogen leaks so they decided to call it off about an hour before scheduled launch time which okay it's the first launch attempt on a brand new spacecraft so the odds of actually going today were you know I mean it, it's tough so they're going to try again on Friday. Well, and we've got to remember, too, this is, this is a test flight. You're testing all these systems, right? Okay, so. Right. Technologically, I remember <laughs> yeah, I about, you. Sorry, <laughs> I was talking about the space shuttle being almost too complicated. Have they kind of cut back a little bit on this, the, the complication of these, so, these spacecraft? Yes, so this spacecraft design is much simpler than shuttle, and frankly, it's much safer. So if you think about the shuttle, because it was hanging on the side of the core uh, you know, I want, I want to say the core launch vehicle, our heat shield was exposed to falling debris. That caused an accident. Mm -hmm. In this case, the heat shield is on the top, the crew is on the top, and the heat shield is protected. The other thing is that's the major difference is there's a crew escape system. So if the rocket would explode like, like it did during Challenger, the crew has a way to get out, and they can parachute down safely. So we, that's not going to happen, but... You, want, you have this just in case. Now in the Challenger, back in the shuttle days, they did not have a crew escape system. So this rocket is much safer, and I think it's much simpler. Does it also have an escape uh, rocket on top of it like the old Apollos did? Yes, okay. yes. It's called the crew escape system. Okay, so that's it's all good thing mine. we have okay. it. Yep, yep. Much well, safer. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> also, that's okay. What, so what does the Artemis program mean for our country? Wow, so that's, uh, I, I could go on and on, but, you know, just there's, I'll give you a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, operationally, we want to go to Mars someday. So Mars is at least six months away, and sometimes two years, depending on where the planets are. So we want to make sure that the life support and the propulsion system work properly so the astronauts, if, if they have a problem on Mars, they can get back safely. So all that equipment will be tested on the moon. So that is why we're going back to the moon. So the ultimate goal is Mars. But go to the moon first, test the equipment, make sure it's reliable. Now, the second reason I like to say is countries that are great are countries that explore. And we're going to explore the moon. China wants to go to the moon. We know they're going to do it. I hope we don't get in a space race with China, but I kind of see that coming. Mm -hmm. So the moon has minerals. The moon is a uh, stepping stone. You can do quite a bit up there. We want to build space stations. There's places, lava tubes, where the astronauts can live. We think there's water there. Uh, so I, I can see us someday getting into a little bit of a space race, um, but strategically, the moon is very important to us for future exploration. Any other interesting facts about this mission? I'm hearing that there is a bit of a San Antonio connection, too. Yeah, yeah. so Southwest Research Institute here in San Antonio has a payload. It's called the CubeSat for Solar Particles. So they're going to release this CubeSat um, either on the way to the moon or while they're orbiting the moon, and it will study the sun. And we have a lot of experiments going on, Southwest Research Institute included, that are studying the sun because we need to understand, you know, how is it affecting global warming, for example, and how is it, you know, what are the risks associated with, you know, things like coronal mass ejections and uh, this is an important CubeSat. I actually am, it's kind of one of my side things I like to do is figure out what's going on with the sun. So this one kind of jumped out to me as one of the, there's 10 of them, by the way, one of them being this CubeSat for Southwest Research Institute. When this finally launches, they're going to take a long time. It used to be about four days to get to the moon, but they're going right. to give this thing a workout on its, on its test drive, right? Yeah, so the trajectory is different. So we, we, during the Apollo program, the astronauts got there in three or four days. Mm -hmm. So this one's going to take 10 to 14 days 
uh, depending on when we actually launch. They're going to swing out. When they get to the moon, they're going, they're going to a 40,000-mile orbit, which is very, very far from the moon, considering Apollo was down at 6,200 miles. So they're stressing out the spacecraft, get it out in a different thermal environment, you know, really get a look at all the data in, I want to say, the edges of the envelope around the moon. So we're going to learn a lot. Now, the astronauts will fly on Artemis II in a couple of years. They will not fly the same orbit. They're going to do uh, something a little more, I would say, in the middle of the envelope. Okay. All right. And well, Carla Collins, you know, you shattered many glass ceilings throughout your career. How will it feel for you personally to see the first female astronaut set foot on the moon? Right. So Artemis, by the way, it, um, Apollo was named after a Greek god in Apollo's twin sister in mythology was Artemis. So NASA named oh. it the Artemis program because we, now we have women astronauts and the first mission, I want to say the next mission to land on the moon will have a woman astronaut on there and a person of color. So NASA has decided this is, we're going to represent all Americans. What does it mean to me? I wish I was on the flight. <laughs> but, but I'm retired now, I'm doing other things and I'm really uh, pulling, now the crew has not been named yet. Mm -hmm. So Artemis 2 will orbit the moon, it won't land. Artemis 3 will land, and they're going to happen uh, two to four years from now. And NASA will name the crew. After this mission flies, NASA will name the crew. So I'm excited for them, and, you know, I hope to uh, be in there cheering for them. That's awesome. Fantastic. Well, Colonel Eileen Collins, thank you so much for coming in. Very sweet of you to come in and share your thoughts and your hopes and wishes for the upcoming Artemis mission. All right. Thank you. Yes, of course. Thank you for being of course. Here. Mike, I know you have more questions. We're going to yes. take a commercial break <laughs> so we can do that. Yes. For the next couple of hours, I'm going to hold her. I know, right? <laughs> you won't let her go. <laughs> it's called a, a kidnapping. Yes. Just yes. kidding. Uh, 927, 80 degrees. We'll be right back.